What is going on YouTube? This is Sam with Team Sam Oxen here. Coming to you guys with a Star Seraph Shadow deck profile for the April 1st, 2015 format. So hope you guys enjoy this deck profile. And guys, as I progress through the deck profile, I'll be explaining to you guys some of the card choices I've decided to play in the deck and the reasons why I play them. And guys, for those of you who do not want to watch this deck profile, I got you guys. The link of this deck list will be in the description box below. So you guys check that out. That would be absolutely amazing, guys. And guys, I am almost at 10,000 subscribers. If you guys just slap the like button and give this video a thumbs up, that's pretty much the same thing. If you guys can subscribe to my channel and share this video, that would be absolutely, uh, absolutely amazing, guys. So yeah, guys. So here's my star here should all deck profile. And yeah, without further ado, let's get it. Let's go. I finally uh, was able to pick up, of course, the chairs and sticks. So here is the full deck profile for you guys. Uh, no proxies in the main deck. Uh, so yeah, guys. To start off is, of course, I play triple star Seraph scepter and of course triple uh, star Seraph uh, sovereignty. Uh, basically, the uh, triple six and triple chair. Uh, this uh, these the star Seraph engine in this deck is just absolutely phenomenal. This card, these cards are just so good. It's able to give. Uh, Additional extra speed into the deck, uh, being able to just go into Deltros and Ouroboros plays with these cards is absolutely amazing, guys. And uh, of course, uh, it's a light, so it's able to help you go into Construct. That's why this deck has lots of synergy um, with uh, the Star Seraph engine. So, guys, the also oh, the basic combo that you need for these uh, for the Star Seraph is of course having a Scepter in your hand and a Sovereignty in your hand. At this point, you normal summon Scepter, uh, you chain Sovereignty into the the summon, uh, you activate Scepter, search out another Sovereignty draw a card, then onto the summon of sovereignty, you chain another sovereignty, and then you draw another card, and then you overlay into uh, Deltros, and then uh, just go off from there, pop two cards, and just do a lot of shenanigan plays with uh, only having these two cards at hand, which is absolutely amazing, guys. Uh, so yeah, and of course, uh, Deltros has the effect where when, uh, when Deltros has XYZ materials, your opponent cannot negate uh, the summons uh, while, uh, yeah, the, your opponent cannot negate uh, any monster summon while uh, Deltros has uh, XYZ materials, so that's what's very very good about Deltros. So you would just go off with your Shadow Fusion plays and like you know, uh, crazy plays uh, with your El Shadow Fusion stuff like that without having to worry about your monsters getting destroyed by cards like Bottomless Trap Hole or Tarantula Tribute. So that's what's really really good about the Star Serve Engine. So that's pretty much it for the Star Serve Engine. Uh, by only having these two cards in hand, you're able to just uh, summon three and then draw two, which is very very good. So that's it for our Star Surf engine, very solid explanatory. Now off to our Shadal engine of the deck. Uh, next you play, of course, Triple Shadal Falco. Falco is absolutely amazing. Falco is a lot uh, is able to bring a lot of defensive uh, presence into this deck. That's what I really, really love about Falco. It's also a crush card target. Uh, uh, so that's really that's why I also like Falco. And he's able to revive back any Shadal monsters from the grave. That's what I like about Falco as well. He's basically a one-card monster of Born. And the good thing about Falco is that when he revives back like Construct and you flip the Construct next turn, uh, your opponent cannot... Uh, let's say you're, fa you're facing against a Mirror Match. Your opponent cannot activate Shadal Fusion... For, uh, from their main deck is because uh, once Falco brings back uh, Construct or any other fusion monster from your grave, it doesn't consider as being summoned by the extra deck anymore. It's basically special summoning it from the grave and it doesn't consider it as an extra deck monster. So cards like Brio cannot bounce it back. So that's what I really, really like about Falco. So yeah, you play Triple Falco, and next you play uh, Double Shadow Beast. Uh, Shadow Beast and Shadow Falco can make great combo plays with, of course, Sinister Shadow Game. That's what I love about Falco and Beast, the basic combo plays. And I used to play Three Beasts, but I found out Three Beasts can be really, really cloggy. You never want to draw into this card. Uh, the only time that you uh, that you want to use him is setting it to the graveyard with Shadow Fusion or El Shadow Fusion. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So... Double Shadow Beast. Next you play, uh, the, the deck thinner of the deck is of course Triple Shadow Squamata. Squamata is absolutely amazing. He's really, really good uh, for using it from the deck by just pitching him uh, and using him as a Foolish Burial. Or even setting him face down into defense position since your opponent will run into it and just uh, it's, it's able to get, get out of the gin lock and stuff like that. That's what I love about Squamata. It's very, very good. And it's able to interrupt a lot, a lot of monster plays. Uh, so that's what I like about Squamata. And it's also an 1800 beater. Next, you play, of course, the Double Shadow Dragon. Uh, gets rid of those back rows, and of course, it's a, another out to the gin lock. Uh, if your opponent runs to the sh uh, Shadow, Shadow Dragon, bounce back the monster, and you're out of the gin lock. That's what I like about the Shadow Dragon. A very, very good, and very, very good, and it's also a 1900 beater. That's what I like about the Dragon. And last but not least, I, I play the One Head Dragon in my deck. Uh, I only play one is because I do not want it to conflict with, of course, Mistake, and I, cause, because I do make a mistake uh, in this deck. If you guys want to play the Double, uh, double Head Dragon, you guys can either cut out one Dragon or cut out the, thir uh, the third uh, Skomarov to play the second Hedgehog. But uh, as of now, I love playing the one Hedgehog. And this is the only 11 Shadal monster lineup that I play uh, in the main deck. So 11 Shadals in total. Very, very good. Uh, next, 
off you play for the non all monsters is you play the triple mathematician uh your basic first turn uh first turn uh setup mathematician is absolutely amazing mathematician and of course sinister shadow game is uh lots of pluses so yeah mathematician next play the one felice uh great single plays and of course felice can just pop a lot of some monsters uh, that's why I like, uh, well, that's what I love about Felice. Very very good. Not lots of monster. I mean, it's able to pop the monster and of course mill three, uh, helping you uh, mill your shadow monsters and getting their effects. This is very very good. So Felice, one uh, one peril peril, uh, very very good. It's able to uh, in trouble a lot of combo plays, and it's really good against getting out to the Jin Lock. Uh, next, you play double effect Villar, and last but not least, you play the one black Rose soldier in Void at the beginning. That is it for our monsters. I believe I do play twenty five monsters in the main deck. Now off to our spells. I played the one Soul Charge. Soul Charge is absolutely amazing. Soul Charge, you're able to just uh, do disgusting combo plays with Soul Charge. I love playing Soul Charge in this deck is because it's able to provide back your uh, your sticks and chairs. And it's also able to provide back your Construct and stuff like that. And then Construct will, uh, will get its effect. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Construct uh, will get its effect if you revive back uh, Construct with Soul Charge. It's because uh, Construct effect states that when this card is special summoned, uh, you're able to just ditch a uh, Shadal monster from your deck to the grave. A Shadal card from your deck to the grave. So that's what's really, really, really good about Soul Charge. It really, really good. It's a, literally a one card uh, win if, if you have the right setup and the right grave. Soul Charge is amazing. Next, you play the one Foolish Burial. Uh, same pur purpose as Mathematician. S uh, sets, sets up your, one, uh, your first turn plays. Uh, one Foolish, one Book of Moon. Dark Core and Regeki, and you're, you're out to the Jinlock. Very, very good. Next, you play, of course, Triple El Shadal Fusion, uh, the best fusion in the deck. Uh, El Shadal Fusion is able to uh, generate a lot of OTK plays. That's what I love about Shadal Fusion. El Shadal Fusion. And last but not least, I played the double uh, Shadal Fusion uh, in the deck. It's because I, I found I, I, I feel like playing three is just very, very cloggy. And you're able to recycle these anyways with, of course, Construct and uh, Shadal Core. Uh, but I feel like, you know, triple, having triple El Shadal Fusion is just more important than playing the uh, triple Shadal Fusion. Uh, so, yeah, that's just my opinion. So, that's it for our spells. Now, off to our traps. Play the one Shadal Core. And uh, double Sinister Shadow game. Very, very good. Very, very standard. To be honest, I might want to uh, even bump up Shadow Court to two because this card is just so good. I, I love playing Shadow Court. Uh, next, you play, of course, Double Mistake uh, for the Necros matchup uh, or basically against any deck in today's current meta. They all search. So, Mistake is just absolutely amazing. Uh, and last but not least, you play uh, the one Crush Card Virus. And sometimes uh, with Mistake, you know, you, you want to use it smartly. Like, sometimes you don't want to have. Um, you don't want to summon, of course, a scepter while you have a mistake on board and stuff like that. You know, you're able to just uh, play smart with this deck. Uh, if you play really, really smart with this deck, you're able to just utilize the mistake uh, to your full advantage. And trust me, guys, it will hurt your opponent uh, more rather than it hurt yourself. So mistake is just absolutely amazing. I love playing uh, double mistake in the deck. So that's it for our main deck. Now off to our side deck real quick, guys. I am proxying triple Denko Seika. Denko Seika is just, uh, very, very important. Uh, so, you know, you must play in the side deck. If you guys do not want to main it, play in the side. Denk Denko is just absolutely amazing. Next, you play the double Artifact Lancia uh, for the Necros matchup. Uh, very, very good. Double Max C. I played the, the hands, two hands, uh, triple MST, and last but not least, one Vanny's Emptiness for our side deck. Now off to our extra deck, of course, South Spanatory, Shippo Shadal Construct, the best Shadal monster in your deck, absolutely busted. Uh, double L Shadal Winda, and last but not least, one uh, Shadal Shikinaga. Off to our Synchros, you play one Leo, one Black Rose, and one Arcanite Magician. Uh, I play two sevens is because I, I do not own a Star Eater. If you guys want to play a Star Eater, you guys take out a star, uh, Black Rose for the Star Eater. But just that's just my personal preference. I do not have Star Eater, so uh, I decided to play the Black Rose instead. So yeah, still still pretty good. Black was still pretty good. Next you play the one Castell, one uh, Excited Knight, one Lavalo Chain. You make great combo plays with Lavalo Chain with, of course, Shadal Core. Very, very good. One the Gusto Emerald. I feel like the Gusto Emerald is just very, very important. It's because sometimes, you know, you have the fusion in hand and you don't even have any targets left in the deck. And going to the Gusto Emerald helps you generate back your uh, Shadal monsters. So that's what's really, really good about the, uh, about the Gusto Emerald. Uh, I love playing one. And last but not least, you play the one Deltros and one Evil Storm Ouroboros for our uh, rank fours that requires three uh, three level four monsters. Yeah, when this card uh, and Deltros effect reads that when this card has X Y Z material, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects when you normal summon or special summon a monsters. So that's what's really really good about Deltros. So you know you uh, when you have Deltros with material, and uh, when you go into Deltros with of course uh, the sticks, uh, uh, the sticks and chairs, you're able to just go uh, here. I'll show you guys what you guys can do. So yeah, 
you go in Deltros, you know, you, you, you detach a scepter, you pop two cards, and then uh, next turn you're able to just go into Shadal Fusion and El Shadal Fusion freely without worrying at any of your opponent's back rows. That's what I love about Deltros. Very, very good. And of course, scepter and Deltros helps you get our back rows, and it, it clears out back rows, spins back back rows. That's what I like about uh, scepter uh, and Deltros. Very, very good. And same thing with Ouroboros. Uh, serves so the same purpose. Your opponent's basically losing two cards that turn anyways uh, when you go into these two because uh, scepter effect activates and then you're able to activate Ouroboros. Uh, they're banishing a card, pitching a card, or returning a back, uh, card back to your opponent's hand. So that's what's really, really good. So yeah. So yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that, that's it for my deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, yeah, guys, let me know what you guys think about this deck profile. Uh, I'm open up to any suggestions that, that you guys have. Thank you guys so much for watching this deck profile. And of course, guys, uh, one more thing that I need to explain. I, I do not play a Bist Dweller uh, in, a, uh, in the main deck is in the extra deck is because I couldn't find space for it. It's either I take out the Lavalwa Chain or, or Castell, but I definitely go into Lavalwa Chain and Castell more often than Abyss Dweller. That's why I decided to uh, either run uh, run one, one of these guys for the Abyss Dweller. But if you guys want to play the Abyss Dweller, you guys can go ahead and uh, make, make sure you guys have space for it. But the extra deck is just very, very tight uh, at the moment. So this is what I have so far. So hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe uh, to my channel. That would be absolutely amazing, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, Team Samuels and Sam signing out. Peace. And don't forget to subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, guys. Peace out, guys.